This supports the old saying that laughter is the best medicine, doesn't it? Next up, the team with Thai met up with Dr. Sandeep Roy, a medical doctor from Nashik, India, who had also flown to Bangkok from Mumbai. I work at a hospital called Panacea Hospital, and I also work at, uh, I'm a professor at the uh, Motiwala Homeopathic Medical College. Okay. And Dr. Motiwala is here with us. Yeah, he's We're about there. to get an interview with him. <laughs> yeah. So excited about that as well. Were you educated on uh, cancer being treated with chemo radiation surgery when you were in medical school? Is yes. That, is that the, yes, is that the yes. protocol? Yes, absolutely. That is the protocol. That is the protocol, but that is the wrong protocol, I would call it. Why is it wrong? Because if you see, total remission is only 3% cases going to total remission. Others, it comes back, there is recurrence, then again there is recurrence, there is metastasis. You keep on uh, bombarding them with chemo, again chemo, and the patient, you get in the trap of the over-enthusiastic oncologist, okay? And you spend your entire life earning and you die. They will subject the patient to chemo till the patient dies. They will never give up. Never give up? Never give up. Is it a monetary thing or is it just an ignorance? Uh, do you want me to make you happy or do you want the truth? I want the truth. <laughs> See, because at times the medical reps, they uh, misunderstand me to be a doctor who prescribes chemotherapy. So they come to me and they offer me 10,000 rupees per prescription. Okay. And if you go for, uh, for example, paclitaxel, 10,000 rupees per prescription for chemo. For example, if you go for uh, paclitaxel, there are brands uh, varying from 3,000 rupees to 27,000 rupees. The more expensive brand that you write, the more money you get. Okay, and there is no need of PET scans every week. Every week, PET scan it costs twenty thousand rupees for one scan. Okay, and then uh, there are f um, many more things like uh, uh, commission-based practice is banned in India nowadays. Yeah. But the pharma companies they have found out a way. They go to a doctor, they pay the doctor, and they show that they are employed uh, with the company. They are working for the company, writing research papers for the company, and the company also pays the taxes for the doctor and pays them as wow. well. Okay, so they they are finding loopholes to pay the doctors. Ah, and uh, I know this because I was offered, <laughs> and I refused. Good for you. Yeah. So the pharma companies have found a loophole where even though it's illegal to pay a doctor commission, they're still giving doctors kickbacks for prescribing chemo. Exactly. That is so dishonest. Big Pharma in bed with doctors in India, utilizing legal loopholes that allow bribes and kickbacks to prescribe chemo? Is India the only country where this is happening? Let's have a listen to Dr. Sunil Pai and Dr. Irvin Sani, both medical doctors, sharing about the business and economics of cancer treatments in a global quest. Cancer is business. You know, it's, it's over $127 billion that is being spent on cancer care. Uh, majority of that is in the pharmaceutical drug cost of the care. The average patient now, um, according to a study that came out by Kaiser Health uh, last year, was that they spend between $10,000 a month and $30,000 a month. So it's ten dollars to $30,000 just for the chemotherapy uh, agents that they're using. And this price keeps on going up higher and higher. So that the average person has, say, three to four months of treatment. Some people have continuously ongoing treatments. So they kind of suppress the cancer, but we're not curing the cancer, for example. Then that can go up to 12 months or more. Okay? Almost they keep coming back, uh, you know, for tune-ups, they would say. So most people don't realize that in, in cancer uh, treatments that uh, the facility, or, or, more, or more importantly, the physician that is then prescribing some of these medications, say if a person is a uh, Medicare patient, the government allows the physician to charge the cost of the drug plus a percentage. So Medicare, for example, gives 6% okay, on the cost of a drug as a reimbursement for you know, de facto aspects of you know, overhead costs, whatever it was. So what happens is if, uh, if, if I was a physician and I was in that system, for example, I, I would prescribe a $100 drug, I'd get $6 back. Now, if I prescribe a $10,000 drug, I get six hundred dollars back, uh -huh. right? So in, in, the, in in other realms that would be called a kickback, but in this realm, since it's legal, it's reimbursement. It's a reimbursement, right? Okay. Okay. The thing is, it's this is the only field, okay, in oncological care that gets that type of reimbursement. Oncology is an unbelievably 
lucrative uh, um, a field of medicine, especially when you're running the business side. Money drives the cancer industry, okay? It is money that uh, makes you write the prescriptions. It is money that makes you uh, write the investigations. It is money that makes you do everything. When I saw cancer patients dying uh, because of chemo, okay, not due to cancer, but due to chemo, I started studying what else can help these cancer patients. And then I came to know that the second most studied mode of cancer treatment is mistletoe therapy, okay, after chemotherapy and surgery and radiation, okay. So, uh, mistletoe is the second most studied mode of cancer treatment after the convention uh, treatments. It intrigued me a lot. I kept on studying about it. I kept on reading about it. Okay. And then I uh, used it for a particular patient. I spoke to the doctors around the world who are using it. I started writing review papers on it. I've written review papers and then I got into research papers and then treating patients. And I have seen patients, uh, I have seen patients uh, who had no right to live. Who have no right to live but are going to their jobs, uh, going shopping and uh, playing everything, you know, they are doing good. The quality of life is as it should be. It's better than mine and yours. Mm. Okay. So uh, this, uh, this intrigued me to uh, pursue this treatment and then uh, today I am the one who is doing exclusive mistletoe therapy. Okay. And all my patients are doing good. Most of them are doing good. Before I go any further with Dr. Sandeep, um, we were able to get some footage of him in his clinic with his patients and talk to some of his patients that are doing this mistletoe therapy. So we're gonna go there right now and we'll be back with Dr. Sandy here shortly. My name is Ramesh Joshi. I was diagnosed of sarcoma of spine. We had actually lost hope in future what will happen. Emotions were too many like, oh, what about my family and all after me. Financially, I was weak that time. All those things were going on in my mind about my family. I have a son, a daughter, what about them? They were still and getting educated at that time. All those emotions were there, but still, doctor was there with me, so I could overcome all those feelings, all negative thoughts. I was operated by the doctors, and then after operation, they uh, actually uh, treated me with the therapy called as mistletoe, mistletoe therapy. And the doctor treated me on that and today I am fit. Cancer is curable. Go to the proper doctors who do well for you and uh, they really care for you. It is curable. Don't lose your hope. We really appreciate you sharing your experience with Dr. Sandy, and specifically your mistletoe therapy. You mentioned you're the only one that you know that's doing this exclusively, right? As, as opposed to mistletoe plus this, plus this, plus this. Describe your, your treatment protocol. See, uh, exclusively, I mean to say I'm using it as a monotherapy. Others are doing it either with homeopathy, either with uh, Ayurveda, uh, with uh, uh, Yunani medicine, with chemo, okay? But I'm doing it as a monotherapy and I'm getting good results out of them. My patients are living. When you say a monotherapy, what do you mean by monotherapy? My patients don't need chemotherapy as a supportive treatment. I mean, people are using uh, chemotherapy as the primary treatment and mistletoe as the supportive th therapy or homeopathy as a supportive therapy. It's called complementary medicine. I'm using it as an alternative medicine. Okay. okay? And people are coming to me. People are living. People want it. People, you know, are uh, talking about it, uh, about it these days. Yeah, and what is it? You're right. I mentioned before the interview, I did an interview a few years ago with Suzanne Summers, yeah. a very well-known American actress who used mistletoe therapy. Right. But she used it kind of integratively with other things. Mm -hmm. But what is it in the mistletoe that is effective against cancer? What are the chemical makeup of uh, the mistletoe? There are lectins, there are viscotoxins, which, uh, you know, induce apoptosis, okay, which act as immunomodulators your immune system is boosted up and uh, uh, due to apoptosis uh, the tumor uh, shrinks the tumor markers come down your quality of life improves your mental ability uh, your uh, uh, general well-being your uh, anorexia insomnia pain you know mm -hmm. everything of your weakness everything comes back to normal mistletoe is a semi-parasitic plant and so it feeds off of other plants yes didn't even know that so oh. 
depending upon where the mistletoe grows and what plant it feeds off of, exactly. it has different properties. Different indications. Okay, so let's say somebody that comes in that has breast cancer, then you might use a mistletoe that grows on a certain plant certain, as opposed to certain, a prostate yeah. cancer. Exactly. Basically, it's almost like uh, mistletoe is like a cancer growing on a tree. It's cancer growing on a tree. tree, yeah. Because if you look at it, it is like a tumor on a tree. Okay, and it, it is feeding on the uh, host tree, just like the tumor in your body. Well, that's really fascinating, isn't it? Mistletoe actually looks like a cancer and actually is also semi-parasitic like cancer. I then asked Dr. Sandy, what exactly is cancer? Uh, what is cancer? Cancer is suppression of emotions. When your emotions are suppressed, your cells start expressing. Okay, suppression and cells expression. Okay, the cells are, start expressing and they start multiplying. I suppress my emotions and then the cells, they start expressing. They start going around. Okay. I will say 99% cases where I have gone to deep history, it is stress induced. Okay. Somewhere back in the history, there is some sort of stress which is followed by cancer. So stress plus suppression of emotions equals expression of the cancer cells. Exactly. And the growth. Wow, it's a fascinating hypothesis. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. It's right yeah. in line with everything mm -hmm. that we've learned thus far on this trip and in previous documentaries. Right. Most of the patients that come to me are, you know, in the last stages with metastatic disease, you know, have tried everything else, rejected by chemo at the uh, end. That is the time when they come to me. And then uh, they have, you know, a death certificate written that you'll be uh, living for 15 days. You won't survive for more than two months. Okay, that is how they come. and. They survive for years together. One of the, quote, terminal patients that Dr. Sandeep has successfully treated is Mrs. Bagul, who had ovarian cancer with metastasis to the brain. As you can see, she's doing great today. Dr. Sandeep is helping real people get better and better, and that's really encouraging. I asked Dr. Sandeep if he had any final advice for cancer patients. Don't lose hope. There is always a ray of hope. Get out of the trap of the over-enthusiastic oncologist. Okay, they will rob, of you, uh, rob you of your money and kill you. Okay, so there are many options. There are many options which, you know, are not coming in the forefront because they are, you know, uh, being suppressed by somebody else. Okay, so uh, look out for the options. Look out for there are many alternative modes of cancer treatment available, uh, be it mistletoe therapy, homeopathy, Ayurveda, yoga. Okay, there are many, many more which can actually let you live. Do you have a lot of uh, patients coming to you because they, you know, uh, made medical tourism to your clinic in India? Yes, yes, Because yes. they've read your articles or they've seen that you're Absolutely. Working? We have patients from uh, Europe, from parts of Asia, from US. We have uh, got patients from uh, everywhere, practically everywhere. And they're coming to your clinic in, yes. in Nashi? Yes, yeah. Okay. Well, hey, that's an option if you're watching, <laughs> folks. It's easy to get to Mumbai. Uh -huh. Lots of flights to Mumbai and then you're, what, a, a two hour? Two hours drive two from, hours Mumbai? from Mumbai? Yeah. So yeah, if you're if you're interested in this type of therapy, it's, it's certainly something that's easy, e easily accessible. It's just that long flight to Mumbai to start with. But <laughs> if you're a cancer patient that's late stage, what you shared with me today, Dr. Sandeep, is a, 